David Cameron is expecting both Olympic Games to boost our economy by £13 billion over the next four years, deduct the anticipated Games bill of £9 billion, and we're still up by £4 billion. Inside Out race through the streets of London to find out more about immediate gains being made, as well as the long-term benefits to be drawn from the whole Olympic experience. Business has been probably 20 to 30 percent down in the last month. I haven't met too many people who said it's good for business at the moment, not local small businesses. Um, we've had a, a tough ride over the last few years with the building and everything that's going on, and we need not a miracle, but I can't see it being you know repaired in three or four weeks. The aftermath, what will happen afterwards if the, the 11,000 homes are built and the offices are built and the, the amount of the, the footfall and the people will come in, then that's what we're hoping for in the long run. I'm talking to Kerry Mort of Limo Bikes, who's in the business of couriering people, not parcels. Kerry, how's business? It's got to be booming, hasn't it, with the Olympics? It is. It's very, very busy. We've got lots of extra bookings because of the Olympics specifically. And are people used to this being ferried around in this type of way, or are people quite nervous initially about you know, getting on the back of a bike? We, put a, we do have a three-time rule. If you've used it three times, you're hooked. Right, well, we'll get to have a go now myself, so we'll see what it's like. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs>
uh, that's led to supply chain opportunities for local businesses, jobs for local people, but also importantly has created huge improvement in connections within the local area um, and, and connections to East London as well as within East London, both in terms of transport but within also in terms of physical connections across, across the East London boroughs. What can business learn from the ongoing local regeneration benefits of the Olympic Games? Real leadership from within the Olympic Delivery Authority, the London Organising Committee, that's really demonstrated and said this is a regeneration project, this isn't a construction project, this isn't just about the Games. And really pushing through that commitment to the social, economic and lasting change for the area throughout the entire supply chain over the entire project. Now all clients, I think, should have the guts to be able to challenge themselves to do that. And then it was back on the bike to be taken to Atkins, the official engineering design services provider of Olympic Park, to meet up with project director Mike McNicholas. Atkins is the official engineering design services provider for the Games. That must be some global showcase for your company. Yes, indeed it is. We've been involved in the project now for six years, um, drawing people from all over our global enterprise of 70,000 people. And I think it's not only an opportunity for us to showcase what we do, but also the UK construction industry, which had traditionally a reputation for late delivery and, and cost overruns. So we took that as a real responsibility for Atkins to do our best to change that perception on the world stage and uh, the global spotlight. What a lot of people are going to be asking is how Atkins has set about ensuring that the Olympic Park will remain a vibrant and flourishing London district uh, well into the next decade and beyond. That's very interesting. I think that starts with the vision that the customer had that that would happen and then everything we designed, so we're designers of the infrastructure, the hard landscape, things like this, was tested against that vision. Uh, the philosophy of 75 pence in every pound spent on legacy was really an underpinning theme on what we did as designers and setting in place principles, design principles, design tests that focused on end use, on the end use being the legacy, the legacy being the use of the park and the social and economic impact that that park would have and reflecting that in everything we did as designers. What projects have you got coming up specifically because of your involvement with the Games? Interesting, mostly overseas. Um, in parallel with 2012 we'd already started on some of the biggest infrastructure projects we see from outside this office today, Crossrail for example and High Speed 2. But overseas we've seen the pull that um, the Olympics had had for large over overseas um, uh, governments like Qatar where we're working as the central planning office looking at the delivery of their infrastructure program up to 2020 and then King Abdul International Airport the largest airport in the world we have a team of all, over a thousand people deployed onto that project across um, four continents I think um, in ten offices delivering the largest control tower in the world an airport the size of the whole of Gatwick uh, campus within 18 months. So going a level and a scale beyond 2012 is our next challenge. We wish you luck with that. Mike McNicholas, Project Director Atkins, thank you very much for talking with us. My pleasure. What goes around comes around is a well-spun saying. Thanks to limo bikes, I certainly got around London to talk to our guest interviewees. Here's hoping the investment that's gone around Olympics 2012 will come around to benefit the UK economy.